<laughs> Obviously, this is your jammy jam. All right, all right. Enough of that. <laughs> Let's see what's up with these Stranger Dangers. What's up, Stranger hey. Danger? Yo. Yo, just so you know, we on, this is uh, being recorded. I'm just a pre, um, whatever you want to call it, disclaimer. This is my podcast, so. Hey. I'll, edit, I'll edit this part that, out uh... where we're talking right here. But um, all right, so okay. how the fuck are you doing tonight? Man. I am hungover as shit. It's the day after Halloween. I'm just chilling out here on Omegle, you know? Well, I would have been hungover if I would have knew known that I wasn't didn't have to go to work today, but uh my wife tested positive for COVID. So uh oh, God bless. It's all right. Dude. She she she's a strong bitch. She's gonna make it through it. But uh I uh, at my job yeah. I come I come in contact with a lot of older people that I actually like. So you know what I'm saying? So I was like, Yeah, let me call in. Yeah. But anyways, um, so I got nothing better to do than sit here and talk to strangers and get drunk for the next three days. <laughs> so I started my drinking today. <laughs> Dude, if that, hey, word, word. Hey, so you're on the music tag. I see a hella equipment and shit. Like, you a musician? Yeah, I'm a rapper, producer, mixing engineer, mastering engineer. Have been so for 23 years. I've been rapping for longer damn, than I'm that. I'm going to school for that shit. Are you? Well, let you me tell rap? you something. I went to school for it too, and I learned a whole lot more outside of school than in school. The only the only yeah. class I took in school That's that was here. worth five fucks was music theory. For the most oh, part, and I already fucking have that shit down to damn T. Yeah, the the, yeah, the and I haven't even taken music theory yet in college. Yeah, yeah. and uh, is that an AKG mic? The one you're yes. on right there, AKG P120. Mm -hmm. Ah, I'm a fucking mic yeah. nerd. No, I know that. I know that fat bass. I have one over mm -hmm. sitting in the it's corner. Cheap. Not really. It's not a bad microphone. Yeah, for nice price. and cheap, and not that bad. Yeah, for a hundred and forty nine right, dollars, right? it gets the like, job done. Yeah. Um, I know many and people that still just like you don't hear any ring from the mic and shit. There's a delay. Oh fucking shit. <laughs> Um, have you ever heard of the the heavy metal singer Ginger? J -I -N -J. Yes, yes, I have actually. All right, yeah. Um, her last album yeah, was recorded the, the, like, on a, the German or Swedish band or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, her last album was recorded on an AKG P four twenty. It's only like twenty dollars more than your mic. Oh, you're fucking kidding! I am not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> She's so talented. She's she is a great talented, and, does that. and her and her screams are like so good. Yeah, um, you know, I, as a rapper, I grew up off of heavy metal, and uh, me and my partner, I'm part of a rap group called the Bearded Weirdos, and I thought my partner was going to tell me no, but <laughs> I, but uh, last year, or the beginning of, middle of this year, I was like, hey, bro, what do you think about having a heavy metal hip-hop compilation? And he's like, that sounds like an extravagant oh. thing to do. I, not the, I thought he would be like, no, I'm good, bro. He was like, no, how are we going to do it? I'm like, oh, okay, I like the way this is going. Yeah, well, a thousand dollars later. <laughs> you like City Morg? Um, I I only know one song by them. I can't say that I like them. I like the song, the one song. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, have you ever heard yeah, of I've actually funny enough, I'm wearing their, their hoodie. Oh, okay, have you ever heard of uh, <sighs> Paraphobia? I don't know what the. Hold up, let me pull up my YouTube. There's this fucking band that they don't have a singer. It's just two guitar players, two bass players, and a drummer. And dude, I've never heard music so unique before. Um, I look, I I am not by any means a guitar player, but I know that when you play on the fret, it sounds like shit. But there's certain harmonics that can only be done by playing on the fret, and um, this is a prime example. So when you're when you're done talking to me, I recommend that you go find this band and. Just take a good listen because it's it's surprisingly good. Um, band is called. Uh, I just liked the shit the other day on purpose so I could see it again, and it's not even in here. God damn! That's a fucking. That's the worst when you like really trying to show some some shit. Like I gotta find it. Gotta fucking. No, find I it. I literally liked it on purpose so I knew it was gonna be in my liked videos, and it's like they just keep on erasing it from my liked videos. 
God. All right. Oh, wait. No, I know what I did. I saved it to uh, Jammy Jams. My bad. I'm looking at the wrong playlist. Yeah, I went, I went out of my way That's to... That's an amazing playlist, man. Oh, you, hold up. You want to hear what's on my Jammy Jams? Hold up. This, this is when I get extra drunk, all right? Sure. Niall Horan on the loose. Uptown Funk by Mark, uh, by you know who it is, by Bruno Mars. Tones and I, Dance Monkey, The yeah. Weekend, I Can't Feel yeah. My Face, Gorillas, Clint Eastwood, Typo Negative, Black Number One, AWOL Nation, Sale. Uh, I know you don't know who Carol Emerald is because it's some 1930s swing music. Aaron Smith, Handsome Dancer, Al Green, Everlast. You know what I'm saying? Like, my shit, pretty diverse. Uh, all right, they're called Polyphia. Yeah, bro. Does that sound familiar? I've heard that name. I feel like I've heard that name. Well, it sounds familiar, but doesn't come to mind. Look up this song. You can see the chat, right? Probably P-H-I-A? Yeah. Right. And the song's called Goat. Uh, their first most popular song is called Goat. Yes. Okay. Dude, King Kill Me Soda. Play that if it's not going to interrupt with us. Play that. <laughs> it's I'm fucking to it. outrageous. The drummer even plays some trap drums. Let me know when you hear this clap. I heard it. So does yeah, you, dude, so that's delayed. What, what are you like? Fucking New Zealand or Australia or some shit? Detroit, Michigan. The fuck? You just got shitty ass internet, dog. Oh, shitty no, I have internet. the absolute worst internet on the fucking planet. That makes sense. Dude, because I'm... Or am I, I, mean, I know it's not me. I've been on here for a while. Because I'm downloading something right now. So that probably oh, it's also me. makes it worse. It's me. Gotcha. I live, um, I live in a, a place that nobody wants to live. <laughs> I lived right next to a fucking big electrical tower. Oh, nice. Yeah, so no internet that's uh, worth that, the fucking they, get out here. Yeah, that's um, like that's been shown to like actually like, like, uh, accelerate uh, cancer cells. Like, yeah, no, I'm waiting that. to die of cancer. That's what I'm. I'm just like waiting to days until I start feeling weird. <laughs> Counting the moments. It's not uh, not on some five G conspiracy. No, no, shit, you, I know like, you... actually like how much like yeah. Yeah, trust me, yeah. I know. I, I I thought that was hilarious. And so it's just like prog trap metal. I, I prog don't know trap the... metal is what I come I to mind because I just hear like. I I don't know. All I know is I like it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's pleasing. It's, I don't mind it. It it's... sounds pretty. Yeah, it's ear candy. It's like um, it's just good. I, I I do like hearing things that are instrumental that are so, um, just driven that it doesn't need vocals. You know what I'm saying? Like um, there's a yeah. song in the swing genre from 1930s by Benny Goodman called "Sing Sing Sing," and if somebody were to fucking lay lyrics to it, it would be blasphemy, and I'd have to shoot them in the dick. Yeah, <laughs> Benny Goodman sing sing nah, sing. I'm about to. Hey, you know what? I'm about to drop some bars right now. Shit, let's go. Let's go let's <laughs> shit, go, let's that's go. what I do. If you want to hear some bars, I can spit yeah. some shit. I might as well do it now before I get too drunk. <laughs> All right, let's see. Yo, I said lime green smoke in the air whenever I'm seen. My team turn a rhyme scheme to a crime scene. Godspeed. You really got me messed up. So you come in the missing like Tom Green's left nut. I like people to laugh at me when they masturbate. So I've been the castaway. I just got back today. Myself filled up with evil. If you still fuck a people that can kill punks like grilled stuffed burritos. Ill fucking vato. You feel something hostile. $100 bills put the pills up his nostril. It's so lame that cocaine gives me nose pains. When they can afford to 40, I'm snoring. The whole thing. What would God say? Why don't you tell me, Padre? It's my way. Your my way is the highway. Literally, I get high that I sit in my driveway for five days till they thought I committed suicide. Wait. <laughs> oh no, it's blasphemy. I must shoot myself in the dick. <laughs> <laughs> No, there's breakdowns in yeah, that part. Fucking do it. Fuck, I'm watching. I'm watching. <laughs> ah, I'm, 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 I'm talking fucking 1080. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, I will. <laughs> no, for real though. Uh, something about that song, so, uh, uh, Sing, Sing, I, Sing. When, when I listen to it, I have a smile on my face that hurts when I'm done. I don't know why. It's just such a happy ass music to me. Like the song Happy by Pharrell. I cannot not listen to it. I don't care how many times it's been played in front of me. I still like it. <clears throat> um but yeah uh hey uh what up <laughs> this delay is tripping me the <laughs> fuck up I... <laughs> well uh just in case you find yourself curious 
I'm going to put the first half of this clip up on my podcast. So this is my channel. Okay. All right. Hey, you be safe, bro. Uh, right, right. Hey, one sec. All right. One sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. Uh, so, uh, I just played a show last night, right? I just want to show you. That's all. I got it all recorded on this, uh, on an, on an old VHS tape too, on an old, uh, <laughs> old recorders. Yeah. So it's like, it's real grimy. It looks like the way you want it to look for that kind of show. You know, the problem is no one's posting it and that's all I have. It was on the VHS tape and I'm trying to look, I'm just going through stories on stories and my Instagram right now. And no one's posted it. So, you know what? Fuck it. Who cares? You have a good, you have a great one, man. God bless. All right, hey man, you you know that's that's before I do go, that is a sad thing, man, because uh I've been performing on stage since 2009 and when I first started, everybody had the love. It didn't matter if they knew you or not. They're like, "Oh, a person's on stage. Come on, guys." Nowadays it's like, "Oh, a person's on stage. Let's go smoke a cigarette." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's what, okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's not. It's it, I, you 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 put it you put it down like perfectly like you that you, you, yeah, you got it but you know well, it's the, whatever. The only I thing, appreciate the talks, man. Yeah, the only advice I can give is who gives a fuck with uh, besides if there's zero people. If there's zero people, start a revolt, burn the place down. But if there's three people in the crowd, perform like there's five thousand. Them three motherfuckers are gonna loyally follow you to the rest of your days. I promise you that. Lord. If you Word, perform, I that. the actually the least amount of people, almost the better. Because the bigger your stage presence, the more you interact, the more you like fucking just lose your mind on stage, the more they're going to be like, what's he doing it for? Us, apparently. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're like, all right, this motherfucker got the juice. Right. Yeah, I get a lot of followers that way. But hey, man, you got be safe, juice. man. It was nice meeting you. You too. What up, Hello. though? How you doing? I'm good. Just a, a, I don't know what, a disclaimer. Uh, this is my podcast. So, yeah. anyways, welcome to the Cthulhu Caverns. I got a pretty serious question for you. Yeah. <clears throat> what was the dopest concert you've ever been to? Your mom's a whore. Why is it so hard to find people when you want to when you're recording? It seems a lot harder to find people when you're recording. What up? How you doing? You look like hey. an R&B singer. Can I ask you a question? Yes, you can. Uh, do you know Marina and the Diamonds? Say that again? Marina and the Diamonds. No, I, I don't. Is, 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 is it a band or a group? Uh, yes, maybe. Type it into the chat and I'll copy and paste it into my YouTube. I can get jiggy with it. I really like when people uh, recommend new things to me. Mar uh, Marina oh, and the Diamonds. Yes. All right. I'm going to listen to you it have, right now. You have to listen to her. All right. I'm on YouTube right now. Give me five seconds to paste this. Yeah. All right. All right. Now, when it pops up, I'll ask you what you recommend. Let's see what we got. Come on. What the hell? Search. So. It's, oh, there we go. All right. So we got um, Black Heart, part four out of 11. I love you, but I love me more. Yes. Listen to this song. It's very beautiful. What? I love you, but I love me more? Yes. All right. Hold on. I love you, but I love me more. Don't come back. Knocking on my door. You've had your chance, and now you want more. You 
That sounds that sounds like fucking music to me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That sounds like that sounds like you leave the club with a with a bomb ass chick. You get in the car and she starts playing that. You know where the night's going. Yeah. Hell yeah, that's so what's are up. You, um, are you a singer? Uh, I'm a rapper. Um, uh, oh wow. Uh, here, this uh, before I start start spitting, I'll give you this. This is my rap group name. You can look this up on any platform. <clears throat> Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, whatever. We're that good. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, he's got a good distribution. Um, so you're a singer. Rapper. Um, I'm a lyricist. All right, so let's see. Uh, is, DB to the, is DB the GD that you were warned about? I got this shit in the bag like an ordered out. The rap caveman that boasted the spite. The fact that was frozen to ice for like most of my life. If you wanted to, oh. got it to get us songs to spit it. Wrong and wicked to break them down like long division. Proof that the troops, the troops, they roll it with me. It pop isn't dead, it lives in the motor city. Listen to the crowd, shut up, they want me more. I can stretch a bungee cord in a game of a tug of war. So what you really think, you gangster because of your tattoos? You downright square like Kung Lao's hat move. My skills shining like a diamond, I doubt his. Place a bed in my crotch and put your money where your mouth is. Thought it was out the game until it came back quick. With some ice on my wrist like I sprained that bitch. Like, they don't want to get it with the criminal. <laughs> what? Let's get it. No man, um, it's what I do for a living. You know, I well, I make I make more money producing, mixing, and mastering than I do at my regular job. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Good for you. At this point, I only got a regular job just so I can get out the house every now and then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh man, it's it, it is a good profession if you are um, when you first start, it's more of a headache than fun. You know what I'm saying? Because There's lots of things you don't know. You'll bump into fucking, like, uh, do you do any kind of production at all? Mm, no. no. Well, they're like, they're, all right, let me let me give you a good example, right? <clears throat> so, say I'm mixing and mastering heavy metal. You know, like, strong guitars and bass notes and stuff like that. All right, well, the kick, a snare, a voice, and a guitar all have bass in it that will fuck with uh, the actual bass guitar. So you have to go out of your way to each one of those and EQ out the bass. You know what I'm saying? But if you take out too much bass of the vocals, it makes it pencil thin and weak. You take out too much bass of the guitar, and it just sounds like it's filtered, like lo-fi. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's but yeah. if you, So in the very beginning, when you don't know some of these things, it becomes more of a headache. But at my level, it's fun. Everything is fun. You know what I'm saying? I, I've... I've bumped into every possible roadblock I've, I could ever bump into. You know what I'm saying? So now I have yeah. multiple methods of like, how do I get around this? Or what do I do? How do I fix this? You're used to it. Mom. Yeah. And it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like uh, building a nuclear bomb or something. You know what I'm saying? Like one wrong move in the song sucks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if I do something wrong, it sucks. But if I do everything just right, That shit ends up on the radio. We all get money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's it's that it, it, you know uh, you know when um the bomb squad comes and it snip the red wire or the blue wire. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. you snip the wrong wire, we all going out of Akbar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> the, but see, if if you snip it just right, you save a lot of lives. Same thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know. What kind of all right? The the obviously I I get that you like this uh, Marina and you like you like uh, love songs like that. But do, what do you listen to when you're sad or angry? Marina also. Also okay, man. That's 
That's pretty profound. Because I have a genre of music for every mode or mood I'm in. If I'm happy, yeah. I listen to 1930s swing music. You know what I'm saying? And um, when I'm angry, I listen to heavy metal. You know what I'm saying? Like, do, do you like Draconian? Uh, Draconian? Yes. 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 It's a metal. Yes. No, I I, I know. I, I got two of their songs on my Jamie Jams. Um, yeah. Me, my favorite band to ever walk the earth is Mudvayne. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, they're they're heavy as fuck. And they also have good soft songs too, but when they get heavy, you feel it. Like they have a song called Death Blooms, and every time I hear that song, I picture myself like almost completely naked, wearing the skin of my enemies for clothing and their blood for war paint. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'm telling yeah. you, I could, I could listen. I could come into my studio so mad and angry, and I want to punch everybody near me. Then I listen to a Mudvayne song, and it's like busting a big fat ass nut. You know what I'm saying? It's like, ah, oh. I'm like, I'm too exhausted to be mad now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> music is like that for me. I, I love music. Music is, uh, it transcends magic. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. more than magic. Yeah. You don't know say right. it makes me feel some type of way. So, hey, man, uh, just so you know, I'm going to put this on my podcast. This was a brilliant, this is a nice exchange. I like this. Um, this is my channel. So expect to see uh, me and you talking on that channel in like a month. It's your channel? Yeah. Uh, this is my podcast, Cthulhu Caverns, and I welcome you to it. Um, I, I like when um, somebody can um, show me something I never heard before, and we can have a diverse conversation about music itself. And I feel like we got somewhere today, so... Uh, please subscribe, and um, er, uh, at the end of the month, I'm gonna up or at the end of November, I'm gonna have this up. I will follow you and subscribe. All right, hey, you be safe. All right, I love you. I love you too. Goodbye. That guy was awesome. He said he loved me back. <coughs> and what up, though? I just had a random stranger tell me he loves me. Top. Oh. <laughs> no, not in a weird way. Not in a weird way. In a good way? Yeah. Um, I'm a producer, rapper, sound engineer, mixing and mastering engineer. Um, and he's just an avid listener of good music. He he showed me some good music. I showed him some of mine. And by the end of the conversation, we're friends now. Good. I like that. That's what Amigos are around for me, at least. That's what I care about. Yeah. So this is my podcast, Cthulhu Caverns, where we talk about whatever the fuck we please. And, oh. um you're welcome. Uh, you know, I, my fans are going to love you, I'm sure. But I'm going to ask you, um, well, first of all, do you do music? Oh, well, I guess you don't want to be famous. Um, not hearing anything. What up, though? How you doing tonight? Oh, what's up, bro? Well, uh, disclaimer, um, this is my podcast, Cthulhu Caverns, where we talk about whatever the fuck we please. Um, okay. I'm, I'm a rapper, producer, engineer, um, and uh, I, don't re I don't even have any uh, question about music, unless you do music. Do you make music? Uh, I don't make it, but I am if you're if you're if you're, if you're If you're a fan, then that's just as good to me, man, but um, I'm going to ask you, um, I'm going to ask you two questions. The one is outrageous. One is, all right, we'll see. All right, question number one. Have you ever seen a UFO? Uh, no, I'm not. Man, uh, I I think I saw one. I think I saw one. Uh, so, like, I've never seen one, but there's so much evidence. And oh, yeah, of course. I'm not facts. asking if you believe. Your average person is, you got to be retarded if you don't believe there's aliens. Facts. But, um... You know, people seeing it. I just, I've been kind of like just taking a mental note of how many people have and haven't had experience seeing one, because yeah, I was, I, I was super I skeptical. Yeah, I don't think it's just a common experience. No, you know? it, to be honest with you, it's uncommon. It's uncommon yeah. that a person has um a story. It's it's more common that people are like, ah, eh, no, I saw a star moving once. You know what I'm saying? You don't really have anybody that saw anything definitive. Like I'll I'll give you a short version of my my story. 
um, me and my friend, we studied physics together. So we're in the backyard of his his uh, backyard, and we're um we're looking at the Vega star, which is a blue star with a red dwarf orbiting it so fast that from the human eye, it looks like it's blinking red and blue, red and blue, red and blue, red and blue. So we're looking at it up in the sky about a 90-degree angle, and if we weren't looking, we would have never saw this UFO. Right above our heads, about four or five power poles tall, it said, it was shaped like a Native American arrowhead. It had no lights, no sound. It just shot above our heads into the distance. Needless to say, I almost shit myself. Like, I was Not holding no some feet. shit, and it dropped into my gut. I was like, it, and me and my friend, we just had this, like, 30-second long, I don't want us to be the first one to say, did you see that kind of moment. Yeah. So, but other than that, I've never seen anything remotely even close. All right, now this next question for sure you got to answer to. I'll give you time to think of it, but this is a serious ass question that my fans crave the answer to. (laughs) All right, you're on death row. You're about to be executed tomorrow. What is your last meal? And there is no, there's no wrong answer. It doesn't matter what you want. Me, I would have a crunch wrap supreme with shrimp fried rice, um, a glass of Captain Morgan, and a cigarette. My uh my mom makes this badass fucking what's it called uh it's uh I don't know what it's called but it's homemade and I swear oh what's Mexican it? Mexican dip oh okay oh, who, oh we're talking about beans guacamole cheese um okay. the yeah. whole nine yards that oh. get a little bit of um get a little bit of what's it called apple cider mm. put just tads on it okay. bro it's so good. Dude, I feel bad for whoever has to clean up after you with all them beans. <laughs> no, it's, but it's so good, bro. Hey, I like I said, there's no fucking wrong answer. You know, if my mom is still around, I would say her fried chicken. Bro, it's so good. Man, that's a solid. That's a solid ass fucking last meal, though. Uh, what would you have to drink with it, though? To drink? Crap, I don't know. It, it could be alcoholic or non-alcoholic. It doesn't really matter. Probably bourbon then. All right. A couple cups of bell bourbon. All right. That's not. That's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. So, um, as a as a avid listener to music, what is your favorite? Well, what what's your favorite genre? First off, uh, rap like hardcore rap like XXX type stuff. All right. So then that means I should probably spit a verse for you right quick. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Yo. I want to give everybody that thinks some dark thanks Celebrating your wife's period in a shark tank When I get drunk I look for blind people And tell them go to the pool and don't come back until you find Nemo Good cop, bad cop, caught me at the crack spot Had to blast and fold him in half like a laptop That's what his ass got They didn't listen hard Me and my G's turning keys like a prison guard I'm like breathing in the crops of the purples bloom You like standing in the corner in a circle room All beat ya He's a surgeon with the strong reef I'm right in the fight and good with my hands like a palm reef and ain't for you give it up busting your joint plus he ain't from the hood so what the fuck is the point gun battle me no no go go back and your rob bro cause sky low can take your head off with his fucking eyes closed we keep the good greens cause we hate trash how's that weed taste kind of like some v8 splash and we shoot first you can meet me in hell until then i'll let my wordplay speak for itself you know that's what i do same it's all right but I um this, uh, my friend his name's joba 14 rap like fucking slump god puts bars together like <clears throat> see bars to me are uh we probably have a different definition of what bars are how old are you just out of curiosity uh 16 yeah yeah we for sure have a different different approach i'm literally double your age plus one I'm 32 <laughs> um you're not that old uh, no, I know, I I know that I'm not that old, but there is every ten years is old enough to like not be able to have the same comparison on music on the upbringing. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like my dad, he didn't have any kind of hip hop influences. All he listened to was like punk rock and hair bands. Mm-hmm. I hate punk rock and I absolutely despise hair bands. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, what's this? Uh, getting ziggy with it. Oh, get, get jiggy with it. Are you, wait, Bearded Weirdos? You typed that in and you got that? Yeah. Are you didn't, all right, so for sure that's not one of our songs. Uh, Beard is spelled like weird. 
You might have oh. typed in B E A. We're no, I typed in how you had it. And get Jiggy with it popped up? Yeah, bearded weirdos. And um, then I went to your pop. Oh, wait, that's not how you spell it. Hold up. Yeah, no, um, we're available on all platforms. Uh, our latest release is uh, Devil's Night. Yeah, I went to build it bearded weirdos and then went to your podcast. Oh, yeah, Cthulhu Caverns. Yeah, y'all got a 5.0 uh, review. Well, we be we be trying. <laughs> I mean, look, man, if you ain't got if you ain't got a million dollars already, then it's kind of hard to build something from uh, organic scratch. And uh, I'm just trying to do that. That's why I'm on Omegle, to be honest with you, bro. Because, um, you know, I pay for Facebook advertisement. I pay for YouTube ad advertisement. And I don't feel like it's real enough. You know what I'm saying? I feel like they just click on it because they're told to. I like to connect with people personally. You know, you've seen my face. You heard my voice. I want to be friends with you. I want you to, like, enjoy my music and be like, dude, I fucking know that guy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I would much yeah. rather all my fans know me than not know me. If you know, if, if that makes any sense. Yeah, because there's a lot of people that want other people to wish that they knew them. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. You know, I could live my whole life without anybody ever talking to me. I could just sit in my studio and make myself happy making music. But, um, yeah. ha, all right, so I did a live music review for um, a year and a half. And um, the reason I did it was because everywhere that I went on my Facebook, I saw people charging. They're like, $5, skip the line, $2, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you shouldn't have to play or pay for somebody to play your music. So I was kind of offended. So I started a, a live music review where here's what we did. Um, we had third, second, and first place prizes. We had multiple sponsors, people that were kicking money and beats and um, features or um, multiple different cities. We, we'd have shows set up. And uh, so what we would do is we, at the beginning of the night, we would silence everything, take a half a gallon, bring it up to the microphone, crack that bitch, and drink with our fans till the end of the night. And we did not do no skip the line, none of that bullshit. First come, first serve. Send a track, and we're going to play them all in order. And it would be anything, the smallest amount of people in the room at once was three. It would be me, my partner, and my wife. And um, we would listen to a person's music from start to finish. And um, we would vote whether or not we liked them. So if I liked them, but my partner and Bandit didn't, I would write their name down. But vice versa. If all three of us liked them, we'd all three write their name down on a post-it note. Crumble hmm. it up, drop into a bucket. So the more people that you can impress in the room, the better your chance of winning. So at the end of the night, when all said and done, we'd wait till there's not a drop of alcohol left in the bottle. Then we would pull names. First place got whatever cash prizes were available, which is anywhere in between fifty to a hundred dollars in cash, and we had cash app it straight to them. They would get three exclusive instrumentals with the contracts and stems to them. They would get three mix and mastered songs when they sent the stems back. Um, they would get a feature from all of our sponsors, including us. And then second place got two of everything. They got two beats, two mix and mastered songs, and third place got one. And um, <clears throat> it, we built such a big following that I used to get messages like every week, and it would make me like cry happy tears. Like I had this one person tell me, they're like, hey, listen, I don't make music at all. Like I tuned into your shit one time, and it was like three months ago. I've watched every one that you guys have did, and I thoroughly enjoy your show. Please keep doing it. It makes my family happy. Like what? What? I, I was like, dude, I'm about to jack off right now. Not really, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I just had, I, when you can affect somebody's life for the good by just doing something that you believe is true, it's an amazing experience. You know what I'm saying? How long have you been doing this? I've been writing music. I'm 32 years old. Uh, I've been writing music since I was 11. I've been producing instrumentals since I was 16. And I've been a mixing and mastering engineer since I was, well, I started my journey at 21 and um, I became professional at 26. So <laughs> a long time, my whole life, more than half of my life. I've been in music. That's what you I do. 
Do y'all have like a Spotify? Like, do y'all post your podcasts on Spotify or anything? No, my my podcast is only available on YouTube. Um, right now, currently, I've been thinking about it. Uh, that's my YouTube channel, Dirty B with Two R's. It's called the Cthulhu Caverns. Um, uh, I've been thinking really hard for the last like three months whether or not I should take my Cthulhu Caverns and make them audio and put them on the other platforms because I can. I do have enough room on my distribution to do that but i'm just trying to build it up to enough where i know that it's gonna get some type of plays you know what i'm saying like visually yeah. most people watch the podcast and enjoy it you know um recently i moved to a new area where i don't have as good as internet so i can't go live for my podcasts oh is that you uh overzealous 117 yeah yeah thanks for the fucking subscribe bro i appreciate it this yeah. is for sure gonna go on my podcast though so I've been um I've been stocking up Amigo clips for the last two months and um mm-hmm. in in December I'm gonna put up our first episode of Amigo clips and it's gonna have everything from me and you talking to me and fucking bi- non-binary weird people talking like listen I'm, hold up I one of my favorite moments on Amigo <laughs> so me uh in like a room full of rappers there's like nine rappers in here. We're skimming along, and we bump into this person that, like, literally fuck candy. Eye candy. Looks like straight up, uh, if you copied and pasted a person from an anime. Like, hottest chick you ever seen, right? I'm like, damn, are you even real? And she's like, he's like, yeah, I'm real. And I got a real big-ass <laughs> dick. I was like, what? Dude, we had, like, a two-hour-long conversation. <laughs> Bro, I love when that happens. And, like, there's this one dude on YouTube that I watch. This, she is a dude that's dressed like a girl, the hottest chick that you've ever seen. I know, man. You would you would and get me. She he has the woman voice mastered, like better than actual women. Right? Talk. Does the I bet I bet they do the anime thing, the ada ada shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's dude, you know, was, it's, it's so it's so strange to get used to, um, kind of. You know, I grew up with gay people; that's not an issue. But you know, like when you have to like, wait a minute, are you non-binary, male, female? How do we even start this conversation? You know, it's, it's, it's it gets a little weird. But once once you've established that, uh, once we've once usually once I've established that this person knows I'm not a fucking bigot, nor do I really give a shit what you think you are. You know, what I'm saying like yeah. we could have a good ass conversation. And, like, all the rumors about, like, you shouldn't be scared of, like, hanging out with, like, a gay person or a non- non-binary you sh- person. No, right? you shouldn't. You shouldn't. It's the same thing as a dude hanging out with a girl. Well, look, let me give you a good example. Or to um, get to them, at least. So, when I was in sixth grade, um, which, at this time, gay people were already pretty much fully accepted. Nobody really gave a shit if you're gay or not. But if you were gay, you were getting made fun of in school. That's all there is to it. Just yeah. like if you were fat, if you were super white and pasty or super black, you get made fun of. It doesn't really matter. Just you have to you have to be like strongly one or the other. Well, um, I knew this kid named Shalimar, and uh, he was Arabic, and obviously in his religion they like stone you to death, throw you off of buildings if you're gay. Yeah. Um, but uh, as far as I knew him, he's always been gay since he was born. He was gay. He, you know what I'm saying? From from birth. It, pretty much it's one of those things that's not a choice. Like, he was for sure gay, and that's just all there is to it. Well, he was friends with all the chicks I had crushes on. So I made it my mission to go out of my way. And at first, I did, I was doing it for selfish reasons. Pussy. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like, I'm yeah. trying to fuck all them bitches. And he's friends with all them bitches. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So at first, it was kind of selfish. I became friends with them. But after knowing him for a while, he was just such a genuinely nice person. It was just easy to hang out with him. Well, he got me all the pussy I ever wanted. You know what I'm saying? I was like, bet. Like, fucking, he'd be like, hey, did you know that, you know, you know, the Dirty Boy? I know everybody makes fun of him, but he's a good rapper. He likes you. Man, I got so much pussy that year. In between (laughs) sixth grade and eighth grade, bro, I was impregnating bitches if I could. Oh, my God. But anyway, so, um. After eighth grade, it was probably like uh, halfway through ninth grade. I haven't seen him in four or five months. And uh, I'm going over to my friend's house. And on the way there, right in front of Primo's Pizza, I see a group of Arabic dudes beating the shit out of somebody. So I fucking roll up. And maybe I was probably 
70 feet away before I noticed it was Shalimar. And I ghost rode my bike into them motherfuckers. And by the way, I took six years of Koga Ryu Ninjitsu, two years of Kyokushin Karate, and six months of Wing Chun by then. <laughs> so I was eager. You know what I'm saying? So I ghost rode my bike into him. The fucking first dude jumped up. Elbow to the fucking face. He dropped. I grabbed the next dude. Me and him wrestled a little bit. I kicked his feet from underneath him and just dropped my elbow in his fucking face. And the other two dudes dipped off. I picked up Shalimar. I dusted him off and I took him over to my friend's house. And we were even closer friends than we were in school. Yeah. Still friends with him to this day. Yeah. My teacher, one of my teachers, they're not my teacher, but like someone I know that goes to my school. Uh, his mom went to the supermarket, right? Really nice, really, 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 really nice person. She was leaving the supermarket, more of a janky area. She got, she looked inside the car and saw a man raping his son. The worst thing that she's ever seen. What? Came I, would, in, I would kill that person. Yeah, he can't. She came in and said something. Her and the uh, the dude and this other dude that all of a sudden popped out of nowhere out of the car came after her. She got slammed for about 20, uh, 10, 15 minutes into the sideway until some people came and helped her. She all she need. The only reason she's actually bringing it to court is because of that baby. She doesn't care about what she thinks about anything. She is totally against. Like pedophilia? Anybody LGBTQ. should be against pedophilia. Fuck that shit. I got three kids. Well, like, well, like um, LGBTQ and stuff. Oh yeah. That's it. And she's the fact that she just doesn't care about her. She's not doing it because of her reason. She's not bringing it to court on that subject. Yeah. With that contention, she's bringing it to court because of the the baby, um, the yeah. kid. It's amazing how people can be, even though it's, it's just amazing how people can be, I guess. Well, you know, for, for a person to live 32 years, I'll tell you what, I've seen it all. You know what I'm saying? I've seen people be racist for no reason. I've seen people be bigoted for no reason. There's no reason for all that. You know what I'm saying? My mom stopped fucking with white boys after my dad. My little brothers are half black and half Native American. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I was raised by a black person. His name was James Williams. He was a three-year veteran in the Marines. And, um, you know, just growing up in a culture like that where, uh, you know, basically all my music was, you know, jazz, Motown, blues, R&B. Uh, actually, he listened to a lot of rock and heavy metal, too, to be, to be honest with you. Like, I was just raised in such a weird way, you know what I'm saying? Like, where we didn't even really know what racism was until when fucking February rolled around and we had to do Black History Month. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, um, but nowadays with um all the stuff that's, uh you know, surfacing with all the LGBTQ stuff, the only places where I really have any kind of, like, um resistance at all is school and sports. You shouldn't be... Oh, yeah. 100%. Look, gay and lesbian doesn't really matter to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're gonna, you're either born gay or you discover that you're gay later on. Um, But don't tell my kid that she could grow up and be a prince if she's a girl. You know what I'm saying? That's fucked up. You're confusing them before they even get a grasp of what life is like. You know what I'm saying? That's a stick in the spokes to a person that's just trying to figure themselves out. And it's all it's also bad when I'm going back to the sports thing, when you tell your kid that you can be that you bring your kid into that type of lifestyle and then they'd be like, Or well, it's a dude and wants to go into a girl sport, you know? Yeah, that's my problem. Or like it's a girl that wants to go into football. She's obvious she's obviously probably not gonna survive that much. Well, I don't understand. Especially if you're little. And you're I don't confused. understand why people that are like that are so far to that direction cannot admit that there is differences between females and males. Our bone I mean, density, our muscle dude, twitch fiber, um, testosterone alone being pumped through your body until you get rid of it. You know what I'm saying? The, the, those create advantages. You know what I'm saying? Like just explosiveness and bone density enough, or alone, are enough to like separate you apart. And uh, are you familiar with the situation with Fallon Fox? All right. 
So Fallon Fox was a male for 35 years, or 30 years, and uh, transitioned to a woman, didn't tell anybody, and beat three women out of their career in MMA. Like, one of them reconstructed her face. The other one gave multiple concussions to. And the third one held their ground pretty much. But when uh, when all was revealed, they're like, oh, he has a medical procedure. I didn't have to tell anybody. No, I'm sorry. You're a fucking piece of shit. You're a dude that was in there beating women. You know what I'm saying? And you should be hung by your fucking testicles if you still have them. Because one thing that a lot of people that are young miss is the women's movement. It's like women fought really fucking hard to have their own sports, to have their own league, to have their own place to, to perform at. And when you, and this is a real statistic. Your average high school age boy can beat an Olympian woman in track. If you don't believe me, go look up the stats. <laughs> you know, it's pretty fucking sad. Weightlifting, martial arts. You know what I'm saying? Like those are those are places where you should you're not welcome, in my opinion. If it's like fucking basketball or tennis or something like that, where it doesn't really have a lot to do with uh, physical contact or strength, then I don't really give a shit to be honest with you. And by the way, those are the only two areas where I have any resistance at. I don't give a fuck if you're a non-binary psychologist. You know what I'm saying? That shit doesn't fucking have any fucking bearing on the world. But when you are when you are clearly been a man for your whole life and you go into a ring and you beat women halfway to death, you need to realize that that's a problem. Yeah. When you and also you're ruining I mean you're ruining you're ruining it for them. I mean, it's their like you said they fought for it. And they want to have fun, and they can't have fun when they have a grown man in there doing. Yeah, there's no way to like like um. I and, remember and the like person's volleyball. Name. Like you could say that football is a man sport and mm-hmm. volleyball is a woman sport. I play volleyball. My, if a dude comes in, a dude that has no experience of volleyball, goes up against a girl that has experience. That has experience. A they dude can get the ass can put up a fight. But they can get the ass with the volleyball. It's, it has nothing to do with for me for, with volleyball. It has nothing to do with, being athletic. In volleyball helps a lot, but you have to have a mindset of the court. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you split it up like that, it's it's not fair. It's not fair, and that's what I'm saying is just not fair. It, now look here. Here's where I wouldn't have an argument at all with martial arts, at least. If you were to say. I was a man, and now I'm a woman, and I want to compete as a woman. If the per- if you say that, and your opponent says, I don't give a fuck what you are, I'm going to fuck you up in the ring. Guess what? I'm all with that shit. Sign the paperwork, let's get it started. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because we're all, we're all in the agreements. Like, girl, okay, I know that you have advantages, but I think that I'm just look, playing devil's advocate from a woman's perspective. Like, all right, you have advantages, but I've been, I do this fucking thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the fucking gym eight hours a day. Let's see you try to take my title. You know what I'm saying? Because um, just as much as Shalimar, I have five lesbian friends. You know what I'm saying? Shadow, Shadow, and Alex are my favorite. Um, look, this. Is, I, can, you mind if I uh, go grab Chaser for my alcohol right quick? Yes, sir. I got a mini um, fridge right here. It's gonna take me one second. Yeah. All right, so uh, so my lesbian friend Alex, <laughs> let's let's start with that. This is uh this is some shit that only a man would do, but she's a woman. <laughs> 
so uh this was like 2004 before um the opioid pandemic and shit like that where uh pretty much everybody was on drugs and uh my friend alex got fronted 500 xanax it's a lot of pills and um she approached me and told me about this the, her situation and basically her her situation was if she didn't come up with a couple thousand dollars she wouldn't have a place to live and everything in her life was going to be fucked so she said to me one of her best friends she said i need to ask you a favor and it's a big favor and i'm like all right i ain't giving you any of my organs <laughs> she's like no 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 not that serious i'm like all right all right what's the deal she said, I need you to make me look like I got robbed. I'm like, well, how do, how do I do that? She's like, I want you to punch me in the face like 10 times. I'm like, I don't know if I can do all that. She's like, look, I swear I, I need it to be done. I will pay you. And I'm like, oh, now we're now that's blasphemy. You don't have to pay me. But God damn, I don't know. If, I, don't, I don't know about this, Alex. She's like, if you don't do it. I'm going to figure out something else, and it's probably going to be worse than this. I'm like, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So we got shit-faced, and we went into the bathroom, and uh, I punched her, and it was not hard enough. It didn't do anything. Her face barely even got red. She's like, no, I need you to make me look like I got robbed. My, my heart sunk in my stomach because I'd never hit a woman before, and I never thought of it. I would never want to do it, you know what I'm saying? But it's like... This is for a cause, Brandon. You got to do it. Oh, I just said my real name. All right, whatever. Um, <laughs> she's like, you got to do it. I'm like, all right. All right. If you really do, are you sure? Are you fucking sure? She's like, I am sure. So I cocked back and I fucking hit that bitch like four times consecutively. Like she, you know, obviously she wanted to look good. So I, I couldn't let her uh, brace for it. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise it, it wouldn't have marked up. And um, so four hits, her lip was swollen, her eyebrow was like four times the size it was supposed to be, and the right side of her face was purple. Needless to say, she she got away with it. <laughs> she paid me she paid me two hundred and fifty dollars for punching her in her fucking face. <laughs> like, look, I'm just saying there is women out there that are willing to do some crazy shit to prove that yeah. they're thug life. Yeah. And like I don't support the the LGBTQ. I don't support it. I don't have a problem. We don't have a problem with it. Like, we don't go against it, but we also don't support it and stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's, I feel like I'm the same like, way. If we, see, if we see someone that is purposely trying to be a different gender, it it doesn't make sense. You're genetically not. If you're genetically a man, you yeah, can't no, I'm Yeah, a, I'm a science geek, so yeah, no, I'm on yeah. the same shit. What's your chromosomes, baby? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What's your chromosomes, oh, yeah. baby? You got XY, you got double X, double Y. What are we doing here? <laughs> it just doesn't make sense, you know? But I don't, I, I don't understand why. It, I just don't understand. It's a social thing more than it's a scientific thing. So here's the way I look at it. If you're a kid, just grow up, motherfucker. You, don't, you know what I'm saying? Most people that think that they're transgender, by the time they're of age to have sex, they find out that they're just gay. And they're kind of glad they still have a penis to use. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And vice versa. So I I don't support it as a child, but when you're in a, when you're a grown ass person, I don't give a fuck what you do. You tell me your name is Shirley. Guess what? We're Shirley. You know what I'm saying? Like three people before you, um, th it was a, clearly a female, and I was like, um, so what instruments do you play? And she's like, oh, I play the trumpet. I'm like, all right, cool. I don't think I've ever actually listen to a woman play the trumpet she's like i'm not a woman i'm like oh i didn't mean to mess gender she's like yeah i'm non-binary i'm like all right bet well i guess this goes to this goes as a double i haven't heard that before <laughs> you know what i'm saying i never heard a binary non non-binary person even play an instrument so long as you do half as good <laughs> you're a first for me you can't even get offended i don't think you have a right to be offended if you look like a woman I, you should be expected to be treated like one until you know like what yeah. you just said your example yeah yeah she told me oh i'm not in the binary oh okay well cool now that i know i'll respect that you know yeah. what i'm saying but um like you said 
you shouldn't expect me to automatically know that you're bi- non-binary if you have tits. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, I don't, <laughs> I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can self-identify yeah. as fuck. All right, here's the way I look at it. If you self-identify as a woman and or as a man or as a yeah as a woman and go to my daughter's bathroom with her, I'm gonna self-identify myself as the fucking tooth fairy. You get what I'm saying? I'm gonna self-identify yeah. myself as the Grim Reaper. <laughs> I got a fucking job to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, or, I don't, there's so many like the stupid things. Like if my son was like, I, I know this seems like a little um, what's the word uh double-sided or anyways harvey or um harvey harvey weinstein right with that situation you know he made fucking actresses suck his dick to get a fucking job that's not cool i'm not i'm not a big fan of that i mean i i get you you're a fat sweaty ugly goblin like motherfucker and that's probably the only way you can get pussy so i can i can argue for that but a talented actress should never have to suck a dick to get a role. You know what I'm saying? Wait, who who was the actress? Well, there's not all of them have came out, but people like um, uh, one of the main examples is Scarlett Johansson. She was one of the people that was like oh, niggas like suck yeah. my dick and you could be you could be Black Widow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Joe Rogan made this point, and I think I I agree with him. If it was my son. And it was Harvina Weinstein. I'd be like, nigga, suck that pussy. You about to be the first Batman, baby. You know what I'm saying? You about to be Batman. Get in there. Shut the fuck up. I don't care what you feel like. Get in there and fuck that ugly ass bitch. You know what I'm saying? Or It reminds me of a stupid ass joke. I don't know why, but this is a real thing. So check this out. A guy walks into a bar. And he's in between two shifts of two jobs. And um, he goes up to the bartender. He's like, hey. I haven't got paid yet, but I work two jobs, man. I'm good for it. You know what I'm saying? Please just just let me drink and I'll pay you back. And the bartender is like, uh, credit's a disease you will not catch here. But if you do two or three things for me, I'll give you free drinks all night. He's like, okay. All right, first thing, you see that big, hefty, muscular black feller at the end of the bar? I want you to go beat his ass. So he goes up there. He starts trouble. He gets his ass beat, but he comes back. Bartender's like, ah, you tried. You tried. You did your best. He's like, all right, my next two things. I have a dog in the backyard with a loose tooth, and I need you to pull it. And my wife upstairs is so ugly, I ain't fucked her in 25 years. I need you to go lay the dick down. He's like, all right, all right, all right. So he goes into the backyard. You're burp, 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 burp. He comes back. He's like, all right, where's the bitch with the bad tooth? <laughs> toodles, bro. Toodles. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For some reason, it just made me think of that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no, it's fine. Um, bro, damn. I hate to end it here, but I actually do have to go to bed. Hey, be my guest, man. It was good talking to you, bro. You have yeah, an awesome bro. night. I love you, bro. Like what you're doing. Mad love, bro. What up, though? What was good with you? Hey, how you doing? I am alive and kicking, so I'm going to say I'm doing pretty good. Oh, you can't ask for more. You really can't. You're selfish if you do. <laughs> right? Yeah, no, man, I'm a happy camper. You know, my, my wife has uh, got coronavirus, but um, she's doing okay. At least you got a wife. Oh, wait, are you lonely? Am I? Uh, no, I'm not lonely. I'm just divorced. <laughs> oh, well, that's probably a good thing. <laughs> yeah, definitely a good thing. Yeah, no, if you're divorced, she is probably a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> more more like a more like a hoe, but uh, Oh, yeah, no, I did the same thing, bro. I was loyal in a relationship for 12 years and she cheated on me with three people. Ah, uh, you know what? Three people, but mine was 8 years. Oh, over the course of 8 years. Mine was in the last month of our 12 years. Oh, damn. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know, I know, I don't know how it feels, man. You know, especially, I'm just a, I'm a person about dignity and principles. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, same here. I don't lie, yeah. cheat, and steal because I don't want people to lie to me, cheat on me, or steal from me. So I just don't do any. That's of those a good, things. you know, like do on to others what what done on to yourself. Eh, kind of, because um, if I could press the red button and kill all kinds of human beings on the planet Earth that at random, I'd press the red button. <laughs> I'm an air. I'm an anarchist. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, 
I do. I do. I'm. 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 I'm the optimistic about some things. You know. I do like how. Uh, you know. You know. Gay people have finally don't have to worry about being in the closet anymore. And uh, you know, pretty much every race has their own fucking like lane to make billions of dollars that they wanted to. I'm glad right. that that's a thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. very happy that that's a thing. But with all the LGBTQ and cancel culture and all that shit, I just want to press the red button, and start over again. Yeah, especially that cancer culture, man. It's getting way out of hand. It is, man. You know, we, like when when you have to question whether or not a comic is saying jokes or not. What where yeah, are we living at? Child's book too. I mean, come on. Yeah, no. See, like I I grew up around gay people my whole life, and so that's never been super a mystery to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, I you know my friend Shalimar, I've been friends with him for fucking 25 years, and he's fucking gay as a two dollar bill. And <laughs> three of my best friends are lesbians. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, and they make the best wingmen. I'm telling you, don't ya. they? No, no, gay men make the best wingmen. No, no, lesbians, that's a myth. Them bitches are trying to take your pussy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no, man. I, so I have a, a lesbian best friend, and I tell you, she would bring a whole group of women over. Well, she's a, yeah. accepted because most of, most of my females that are, uh, that are lesbian friends, they're, they're uh, the boy version. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, well, yeah, she, she's – She's very masculine, but she was married at the time as well. So. Oh, okay. Well, then she's a she's a loyal ass motherfucker. I bet. Yeah. That's yeah. thug life. <laughs> Look, Shalimar got me all kinds of pussy from sixth grade to eighth grade. All the chicks I had a crush <laughs> on, I I had to express to him how important it was that I had to get in the panties. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and if and if I had a good ass argument, he'd make it happen. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. I get that, but when when you when you're like when my I have to worry about my daughter going into the bathroom with some fucking dude, you know what I'm saying? Now we have the box. The box? What's that? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Now we have to go outside. You know what I'm saying? Now now we have to talk right. with our hands. Um when you tell my little daughter that she can grow up and be a prince or Dwayne the Rock Johnson, we have to fight now. You know what I'm saying? We have to box now. You know right, what I'm saying? Yeah. I hate that. And also, all right, by the way, I, I have, b- before I say this, I have no hatred for transgender people at all. All right? Right. If, if you're mean... a grown person, do what you do. Um, But where I draw the line is sports. Women, women fought really hard to have their own version of NBA, to be their own version in the Olympics. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So when you could have a person that's been had testosterone course through their veins for 30 years, high bone density, muscle twitch fiber experience, and explosive energy go against a woman, that's not fair at all, period. And whoever right, exactly. sanctioned that should lose their job. There's a whole reason why sports Men and women were separated. separated by sex. Thank you. There's a whole reason why, yeah. That's all. That's it. I don't really give a fuck. You know, if you become governor or you're a psychologist or a fucking craftsman, I don't give a fuck what you are as long as you're good at what you do. And that, that inclusive yeah. shit kind of pisses me off, too, because um, we shouldn't be looking for to fill every diverse role. We should be looking for people that are just good at the job, no matter what the fuck they look like. Exactly. Right. Like. I believe everything like you- should be a meritocracy. You should prove that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you should be able to show me that you're good at what you do. And I should be able to accept how good you are and put you in this position. You know what I'm saying? Because Exactly. I'm a rapper, producer, engineer, so there is no, like, hate in that department. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck. If I found out that Tech Nine's engineer wasn't Benjineer and the whole time it was a Stefina, it was a Steven when he was born. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't give a fuck. That motherfucker made that music sound good as fuck. And I want to know how right. the fuck that person did it. Do I have to suck their dick to learn this skill? Because I will, and I'm straight and married. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, like, there's lanes to the shit. And I feel like the media kind of, like, perpetuates everybody in these fucking circles, for no, in bubbles for no reason. Yeah, I mean, I mean, media, you got to look at media like... Bad shit sells, you know, so they're going to try to make as much bad as what 
opportunity they can. Well, you know, I, it, it is true. I'm not saying it's untrue, but I feel like there is people in this world that just want to hear truth. Like, if, if I... All right. Um, how much of a space freak are you? Oh, I love space, man. All right. So I'm sure you're familiar with the Hubble and its journey and how long it's been doing its thing. Right, yeah. Well, next month, it is November now, next month they're launching something that has way better capabilities. And it's been really? in the making since 1994. It's called the James Webb Telescope. I heard of that, yeah. Yes, in uh, December 18th, they're going to launch it, and it's going to take eight months to get a million miles away from Earth. So, so fast, shit. <laughs> <laughs> So pretty much by mid 2022, we're going to know what happened in the very beginning of the universe, about 20 seconds after the Big Bang. Because uh, the Hubble, t the Hubble Space Tele Telescope has um, basically the same uh, range as our eyeballs do. It doesn't mm -hmm. see ultraviolet. It doesn't see infrared. It just sees optical light. Right. Yeah. And look at some of the pictures it took. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look at how far it's seen into the universe. And, um, well, the James Webb Telescope... All right, all right. The, the Hubble Space Telescope has a 1,000 times optical zoom. That's a lot, right? Right. James Webb has a 1.7 million times optical zoom. Jeez. And it sees in every light frequency. And it has a bunch of fucking radio responders on it. So it can pick up pretty much every frequency of anything that we know of. <laughs> right <laughs> so we're gonna know so much more about the universe in the next couple of years and i love how people are just focused on these stupid little dumb things like gender and politics yeah man it's just because you're another you're american too right correct yeah all right so can we agree that none of the options that we've had for president for like the last 50 years have been good yeah man like it's at a the best of two evils been... every time yeah, the best of two evils. I mean, Trump he he did a little bit better than than all the other ones. You know but... how many you know how many people would skip you for saying that. <laughs> and look, I hate Donald Trump, N not as a president, but as a human. Not hate him, but I I loathe him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, he's as a person, he's not a great person. No, he's he not. He's really good with finances. All right, but other here, than that, here's he's... the way I look at Donald Trump. He wasn't presidential like. Which I want. You know what I'm saying? When I look at, like, Obama, right. he had some of the worst practices of all presidents. You know, oh, I'm a, I want whistleblowers and I want that, but then look at Edward Snowden. You know what I'm saying? Need I say right. more? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, they're, they're all liars. They all say that they're going to do something, and when in time comes, when the money presents itself, they don't do anything. But Donald Trump was already a millionaire, billionaire, before he became president. And the price that they were paying him to be president was something he made in a week and blew on hookers. You right. know what I'm saying? So he he was like, man, fuck the money. Let's get the shit together. Fuck this China trade bullshit. Let's get our numbers together. Because before he came into office, we were paying um, six or something times what they were paying to ship shit over. Yeah. He's, like, he's like, either we both pay the same price or neither one of us pay nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And bam, that's fixed. Gas yeah. prices, best in my life that I've been alive, and I'm 32. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, now they're the they worst really, they've ever really been. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm 32, like, too. <laughs> look at bet. that. We the same age, man. And look, like, I, I understand that people were like, anything but Trump. But Biden? Come on, man. They had so much better yeah. options. Like, Tulsi Gabbard. Look, I'm, I'm politically homeless. I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. I just want somebody that's worth the fuck to do something. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm the same. I'm the same way. And it sucks because there's so many good candidates out there. But you, but they only play by the two, rules. maybe three of them get press. Well, because the, the ones that are worthy don't play by the rules. And that's not, that's a no-go. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Tulsi Gabbard served three tours overseas in, in, in a medical unit in the Marines or in the Army, whatever. Came mm -hmm. back and was congresswoman for six years. You know what I'm saying? Is a woman of color and a woman, by the way. Mm -hmm. And she didn't stand a fucking chance at the last election. Yeah. She, well, I mean, they, they don't get press. That's that's the only... That's a, 
That's the big thing is it's always the two big parties, Democrat and Republic. The only the only president that was not a Democrat or Republic was a very first pro- pro- uh, president, and that was because there was no parties. No parties. And they say that the parties have switched. So on, they say that. They say that, so, they, yeah. They, yeah, they say that. They say that the first Republicans thought like Democrats and the first Democrats thought like Republicans. I don't know that. I'm not from then. All I know is, uh, you know what I'm saying, they had some pretty good ideas when they founded this country, like the First and Second Amendment. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you yeah. have the freedom of speech. You have the freedom to assemble. You can say whatever the fuck you want. But once you invoke action, then it becomes a problem. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you voicing your opinion. Uh, do you know who Joe Rogan is? Yes. All right. I've been listening to Joe Rogan's podcast for the last three years. So I've I've seen over a thousand episodes. Oh, shit. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's the and the reason why is because he is the living embodiment of free speech. He is definitely. He invites people on his show that he knows for sure he does not agree with them all the time. And he doesn't, mm-hmm. like, scream at them or make them feel like they're fucking stupid. The way he approaches it is, well, here's what I believe. I know you believe that. Try to convince me to believe what you believe. And then I'll try to convince you to believe what I believe. And if we mm-hmm. get anywhere, then we've accomplished something. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, like Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro, most people hate him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't because I just pretty much... Everything he says has statistical facts that you could look up on Google yourself. Right. Exactly. Yeah. He works. A, what's really cool about him is he works straight off of statistics. Right. So, but he also holds, you know, uh, Jewish beliefs. So, you know, he believes that, you know, gay people are going to hell and weed is bad for you. But after, um, after two, three hour conversations of Joe Rogan, now he's kind of like, well, you know, I, I think you should own a gun. And if you smoke weed and you ain't a retard, you're probably not that bad of a person. If you can make a person like him think that. <laughs> you, yeah. Yeah. Um, I also hate Alex Jones. I hate him. Like, I, I can't stand that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? He screams at the top of his lungs about fucking mm-hmm. interdimensional aliens and Pizzagate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I, I, just, I can't take the guy. But when he goes on Joe Rogan's experience and he has Jamie fact checking every fucking thing he says, and you realize that 86% of the shit that comes out that weirdo's mouth is factual, I'm like, okay, how much do I really hate this guy? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me look into what the fuck he's talking about. He might have a point here. <laughs> I, I don't know. There is none of that on the news. You know what I'm saying? CNN, NBC, Fox News, they don't do that. None of them are actually like real journalist anymore you know yeah exactly and whenever something does come up they just uh they yell at each other you know yeah, or they, re- they just revert to their side or their party exactly or they'll just cancel it and completely and just go to something else well one of the main reasons i brought up joe rogan was to say one of his most famous sayings the best way to combat uh, the best way to combat bad speech is with better speech. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this cancel culture shit doesn't make any sense to me. Like, uh, for instance, like Dave Chappelle. Have you seen The Closer? The Closer? No. Okay. Now, before you listen to anything that's going around on the internet, before you take any sides, go on Netflix and watch The Closer from beginning to end. And yes, he has been targeting the L- LGBTQ community for a couple of years, but it's because... They targeted him. And Mm -hmm. it's kind of like one of those like, well, let's see who's really right. You know what I'm saying? And he just, uh, but in this last one, which was like pretty much, I think it's the reason he did this. He spent the first half of his special just being like, yo, isn't it funny? Isn't this funny? Isn't that funny? It's a little silly, right? And then at the end of it, he tells the story. So uh, the story goes. Um, he, it's around Christmas time and, uh, he's on tour by himself and he, and he's, uh, it's two, two or three acts before he gets up. So he's sitting at the bar, right? And, Mm -hmm. um, there's an old lady at the end of the bar and she just looks like kind of lonely. And he's like, you know, it's almost Christmas. 
he, nobody should drink alone. So he asked the bartender, he's like, hey, get her two orders or whatever she, whatever the fuck she's drinking. So she scoots down and they talk. And um, he's like, okay, this is going well. And then at the end of the conversation, she brings up one of his first jokes. <laughs> he's like, oh, all right, so this is where this is going. He's like, yeah, my the lady's like, my daughter's transgender and this and this and this and that. And he shows her a picture. And she so shows him a picture. He's like, okay, cool. Awesome, you know, and he, he eventually makes his way out of the room. A couple months later, he's in, he's back in L.A., and uh, it's one of his shows. He's the headliner there, and um, he looks out into the crowd from backstage, and who is this? No way. It's the person from the picture that the lady showed me. It's her daughter. So he, he approaches her, and they have a little mini conversation, and turns out she's a comic. She's a comedian, too. And, well, you know, he, she, whatever, you know, it, it was a, yeah. he became a, she, um, she was like, uh, oh no, you're one of my favorite comedians. You know, I don't agree with everything you say, but everything you say is funny. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. he, he's like, all right, well, next time around, uh, that I'm coming up here, how about you open up for me? And she's like, really? He's like, yeah. So she opens up for him a couple of times, and um, the first time she bombs really bad. 45 minutes straight of pretty much the crowd just hates her. Uh-huh. And then um, she gets off stage. Dave Chappelle gets up there, and he tries to save it a little bit, and he starts talking with her like from the crowd to stage, like back and forth. And um, somebody in the background, in the, in the, some like, you know, uh, what do you call it, heckler, says something, and old girl ends his shit. You know what I'm saying? Like some like ridiculous perfect roast and made yeah. up for the whole 45 minute bombing. The entire crowd is laughing until tears and they go back and forth and have this conversation. Well, they go on to be good friends mm-hmm. and um, Joe, he comes out with his special sticks and stones where he addressed the he called them the alphabet people. You know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah. and it was a really big bit of his. And um, it wasn't necessarily slanderous of any sort. It was, you know, if if you were from any side, if you were reasonable at all, you would just think it was funny. Anyways, uh, she goes on Twitter and defends him and is like, yo, just really look at what he's saying. It's really not that offensive. It's just funny. Well, her community dragged her through the mud. She committed suicide after two weeks of pretty much Twitter just ruining her life. Mm-hmm. Well, um, Dave Chappelle started a scholarship for a million dollars for his or her kids. And um, mm-hmm. at the end of his show, he's like, well, you know, with all these jokes being said, now I have to come to the realization that one day, one day I might have to talk to his or her kids and be like, your dad was one hell of a woman. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much the last words he said on stage before he got off. So anybody, and look, I was almost in tears. You know what I'm saying? I almost had like a happy, sad tear. It was like tearing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like one hot one leaking down the cheek. Mm-hmm. And when I, the next day, every fucking news source, every radio source, everybody's talking about it. And it just made me sick to my stomach because I really realized that the people that hated it the most didn't listen all the way through. They just made it to yeah. where they got offended and shut it off. Like, it's the nuance. It's the nuance that everybody avoids. Yeah, yeah. It's... People have gotten thin skin. That's that's one big deal. Everybody, you know, like... I don't know how, like, people feel they can be offended for other people. Yeah, I know. That shit drives me nuts. Like, it has if it has nothing to do with you, then why are you offended? You know, like. Well, that was my like you, you, that was my thoughts on gay marriage when I was a kid. When I was a kid, before I even understood why people had a problem with it, I'm like, what does that dude and that dude fucking each other and getting married have to do with your life? Exactly, you know, you know like. What, when you grow up and you realize that motherfuckers are super religious and they really care about what the Bible says. Mm-hmm. By the way, this is my Bible. Oh, nice. All hail Cthulhu. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? Cthulhu doesn't discriminate. He hates you all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, people like religion. 
that's another thing. Like, you know, I, I grew up, um, I, I went to a Catholic school and they made me hate God. They made me like despise the idea of God. And uh, I became an atheist. And then just because I sat through a couple of advanced physics classes, I realized that there's so many things that in the universe that are almost governed by an unseeable force. Like, all right, let me give you an example. If you mix bleach and ammonia, what do you get on Earth? Bleach and ammonia? Yeah. You get, like... Mustard gas. CS gas, yeah. Yeah, mustard, mustard gas. gas. All right, on Mars, if you mix bleach and ammonia, what do you get? Mustard gas. If you mix yes. bleach and ammonia on the moon of Titan around Saturn, what do you get? Mustard Probably gas. Mustard gas, yeah. Every fucking time. Why? Now, the why part can be broken into two parts. Scientific fact, where you break down the chemical composition. But then mm -hmm. another part of you has to realize, like, but why, though? Why does it have to every single time be that predictable? Something is making that happen. Now, it may not be conscious or living or anything like that. So I went from being an atheist to being Gnostic. I'm one who believes in God but does not believe humans can comprehend or understand it at all. Mm -hmm. So I do believe that the universe has some type of consciousness because it does kind of do things that are unexplainable. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, yeah. In, in us as humans, we try to explain everything. We try to put a, a meaning and a definition to everything. And not all the time mm -hmm. are we right. But, you know, we, we kind of like touch on some things. And we, we could prove some things that are right. It's It makes it even more strange. You know what I'm saying? Like, You're right, like, yeah. Yeah, like everything everything has like a rule. Yeah. And it and look at the golden like, ratio. I mean. The golden ratio, equivalent exchange and alchemy. There's, there's yeah. so many things that like just make sense. Exactly. Uh, the Fibonacci sequence. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You know, there's so many things that just like they have to make. All right, here's one. Uh, you ever heard of the divine architect theory? Uh, no. Okay. Well, I'm gonna boil it down to one stupid ass little um analogy. All right. Why is a butterfly orange and black? A monarch butterfly. Why is it orange and black? Its natural environment is dark green. All yeah. right, you see how your brain, you're like trying to figure out the most logical explanation. Mm -hmm. Well, the most simple explanation is it looks pretty. Yeah. So what would make something that, by the way, you know, you know how the human eyeball works. Light reflects off of one thing, goes to your fucking eyeball, your brain interprets it. Mm -hmm. Why? Why is it so pretty? And why? Because pretty much if me and that hawk see the same thing. That shit looks like food to the hawk. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Why does it look so pretty? It has no it has no purpose of living besides being pretty and food. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't necessarily believe in the architect theory or divine architect theory all the way, but then string theory. I'm sure you know what string theory is. Mm -hmm. uh, infinite amount of universes, infinite amount of, yeah. infinite amount of possibilities. Well, that explains ghosts in demonic possession for me. Because I don't believe in either one of them as a physical phenomenon. But right. let's just say that a universe sits on top of ours. And whether it's different or not doesn't really make a difference. If anything that that universe does in any way translates to our universe, it's going to be a disruption in what we see or do. Yeah. That would be ghost to me. Demonic possession would be... um. Say you're all right, so we're th three dimensional beings, yeah. Right, so we're built in the three dimensions, but we see in two dimensions. You mm -hmm. have two eyeballs, you see a flat plane, but because you have two eyeballs and a brain, it creates depth perception, and you start to see the whole you know, like what's this behind this, how far, right. anyways. But at, as three dimensional beings, we see in two dimensions. What would a fourth dimensional being see? In three dimensions, yeah. What the fuck does that mean? See, your brain uh, is gonna splat against your head trying to trying to like comprehend what it really means. It's like I think it's like X ray. Pretty That's much. That's what I think too. I would think that a person with fourth dimensional sight would be able to see you, what's inside of you, and what's behind you simultaneously. Mm -hmm. However, that makes sense. But what's yeah, a <laughs> but keep going up dimensions. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? What's a fifth dimensional being C? Good luck. Right. <laughs> and isn't there like 16 dimensions or something like that? That we know of that are yeah. that are mathematically sound, that you could like right. do mathematics and prove maybe. So that leads me to like, when we see ant colonies, you know, like like when I see an ant colony and I ain't got any weapons on hand, I'm just observing. Mm, but if I got yeah. a bottle of water in my hands, I'm flooding your fucking compound. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If I got a blowtorch or, you know, if I'm taking dabs and I got this bitch on hand, you all burn. Oh, yeah. Up. Fuck those fire ants, man. Fuck them all. <laughs> I'm just saying. So if you're a sixth or seventh dimensional being and you're like, you know, let me watch TV, a.k.a. sift through the multiple universes and you come to find yourself in this plane and you realize that you've taken over a, a, a host, you can make it do and say whatever the fuck you please. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I, I just try to think that because demonic possession has never truly been... Every single person that has been possessed by a demon believes in Christianity or Catholicism. Never once in the history of America or the entire world has a person that's an atheist or Gnostic person became demonically possessed. It's never yeah. happened. It hasn't happened yet. So what's that say? Either people are extremely religious and work themselves into some psychosis or mm -hmm. just because of their religious beliefs, they're a little bit more open. And when a thing comes around and uh, is more intelligent and more spiritual than they are, they can influence them. Yeah. You know, it makes um, sense, too. It know? does, doesn't it? Yeah, because, I mean, if you look at it like uh, the fifth dimension, I think, is time. And, and, and you time can see through time, you know? You know, there's a there's a cool experiment that NASA did, or they found out about it somehow, um, that, like, a person that is in orbit around Earth is, like, th three seconds younger than a person on Earth. Really? Yeah, just because of the way that time, like, physically affects us. Mm -hmm. If you were to spend your entire life orbiting in space, you're going to, in, in you know, like, say, 15 years... That's like an hour's worth of time where you're better. You know, you're 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 more alive than the other person. That's not a lot, but let's yeah. just say that when we eventually figure out uh, FTL, faster than light speed, you know what I'm saying? We might be able to go back or go forward in time. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. I don't like it's... to think. W w as soon as you think you know everything, you know nothing. Exactly. Let me give you a good example. I'm a mixing and mastering engineer. Now, a mixing engineer, to become a mixing engineer, it took mm -hmm. me it took me seven years. To become oh, wow. a mastering engineer, it took me three years. Not because either one of them are harder than each other, but there's mm -hmm. so many nuances. Like with mixing, mixing is basically finding a place for everything that's in the track to sit and not interfere with each other and be visible, well, visible to your ears. Right. A mastering engineer's job is to take your finalized cut and boost it in every direction. I want the bass to be harder. I want the mids to hit harder. I want the highs to be crispier. You know what I'm saying? You're taking what's already good and making it better. Mm -hmm. Making yeah, it perfect, definitely. if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. And over my years, because, you know, I'm a rapper, and um, I, I produce rap music, and um, I mix and master for many genres. But once I started mixing and mastering for heavy metal, and I go from, you know, say my my rapper clients would send me uh, their zip files, and it'd be 10 track, uh, 10 inserts. You got the beat, you got, you know, the primary verse one, verse two, verse three. Then you got overdubs and ad libs for all those. Then the hook usually has like five or six layers. But when you get into heavy metal, my stem files start to look like 109, 236. Shit. Really? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got, you know, six different layers of guitar, multiple layers of bass, a bunch of transitions. Everything just has to sit right, and it has to make sense. Mm hmm So w that's almost um, influenced my life around me. You know what I'm saying? Like, when are, are you familiar with sensory, um, sensory overload? Yes. Yeah. When you just got too much shit coming in at once, you're just like, oh, leave me alone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, 
you find yourself trying to like uh, navigate that situation. So I find myself in in situations now where it's like, why is this person yelling at me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I yeah. I don't get it. I didn't give you a, per- a reason to yell. All right, hey hey hey, I get you. I understand. If, the more you yell, the less I'm hearing of it. Mm-hmm. Break it down. Give me a reason to follow you. You know what I'm saying? Like, where are we sitting on this in, in this idea? Like, I learned that from mixing and mastering music. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I would have never figured that shit out in in public. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I'm pretty introvert now. I used to be like all over the place, and I just grown out of that because yeah, a lot of the yelling like it's it's really big in my family for some odd reason. Yeah, because a lot of people. When they're when they feel like their opinion is um like, a bring bring it bring it back to Joe Rogan. These are lessons I learned from Joe Rogan. He made me a better person. Seriously, mm-hmm. don't be married to your opinions and always be open to the possibility of your mind being changed. Yeah, yeah. So I never speak to a person, whether because the only places I feel like I have any kind of say so. Or in mixing and mastering and rap, period. Because I've been rapping since I'm 11 years old. I was in a battle league for six years. My record is 11 3. You know what I'm saying? Like hip hop is my second language. This is mm-hmm. what I fucking do. And I impress, I could walk into a crowd full of black, white, Asian, Arabic, doesn't matter. All of them are going to be my fans when I'm done. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. That's what the fuck I do. And it, it, it was not an easy thing to accomplish, it was something that took my mm-hmm. whole life to master. So other than that, I never, and I'll, even there, I never say like, all right, I used to run a live music review, right? And yeah. um, I would have, you know, the absolute worst to the absolute best people submit music to me. And um, I would pay them at the end of the night. So here's what we used to do. So <clears throat> I had, um, at the time, I had this corporation called Your Mama's Favorite Rappers. And it was, <laughs> and it was about 30 people. And all of them fully supported the cause. So imagine 30 people's worth of donations, $10, $20, $15. You know what I'm saying? At the, whenever, mm-hmm. Every time I threw a show, first place prize usually was like $300, 10 exclusive instrumentals, so on and so forth. You know what I'm saying? And then second place had its own prize, third place had its own prize. But the reason I started this in the first place is I would go to I would find live music reviews on Facebook and they'd be like $5 to skip the line, $2 for me to even play you at all. And as an artist, I'm like, hold up. That's not the way it works. You don't pay to be entertainment. You know what I'm saying? If I'm the content of your yeah. show, I shouldn't have to pay you to have content for you. So I made sure that our platform, we spit in your face if you talked about money. If you're trying to pay me, I would, like, blow you up. I'd be like, oh, this motherfucker think it's one of those kind of things around this bitch. Nah, bro, you sitting. You know what I'm saying? So um, the only thing that, like, capped our time restraints is we had a formula. So here's what we do did for a year straight. We didn't drink all week, right? We For mm-hmm. the whole week, for six days, we were sober. But on Friday, I would take a half a gallon with me and whoever was in there, and we'd go on fucking screen with everybody. And we had polished that bitch, bitch off. And at the end of the night, if you got played, you got played. If you didn't, submit next week. And uh, here's how it worked. Let's say uh, you submitted, and it was me, my wife, uh, my homie, uh, my partner, your homie Jay, and we had two rappers, two other rappers in here too. So that's five people. All right. Mm-hmm. If you're whack, but you're okay, you might convince one of us. So one of us will write your name down on a sticky note. But if you're dope, all five of us will write your name down on our own separate sticky notes. And we would crumble them up, throw them in a bucket. So the better mm-hmm. you were, the m- better chance you had of winning. But it was it was also, ha- luck was a big thing. Literally, maybe 30% of the time, the person with one vote got first place. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you could have one person in the room that's like, you know, this is garbage quality. Uh, I don't really like your cadence at all, but your message was clear. Your rhyme mm-hmm. schemes are dope. This and this was on point. You got my vote. Sometimes that person won the whole pot. So yeah. uh, it, it, I learned a lot. I learned 
how to look past things that I biased. You know what I'm saying? As a mixing engineer, mm-hmm. mastering engineer, if it wasn't properly mixed or mastered, I would have a problem with it. But I would I would immediately notice that. It would take less than 30 seconds for me to realize what was going on. And be like, all right, yeah. let me put that at the back of my brain. Let's not focus on that. Let's focus on every other aspect of the song that they're sending. That was a learning experience. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. for you know, I'm not big into politics or religion, but I also accept room for them in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like if a person has a really strong political or religious value, I would like to talk about it with them. You know what I'm saying? I, I would like them to express themselves and for me to try to grasp it from their angle. You know what I'm saying? They don't yeah. have the same experience as I do, so there is no reason for me to judge them on how they're talking to me and how they feel. I need to instead uh-huh. look at it from their perspective and why they're thinking the way they do. And uh, that is just lessons you have to learn. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. By the way, this has been a great conversation. Uh, I've been recording this whole time. This is going up on my podcast. That's my oh, channel yeah. on YouTube. This whole I was going to ask you if you uh, if you had a YouTube. Yeah, this this whole segment, even check now, I'm not about to edit this part out either. <laughs> like this, like straight up, our whole conversation is going up. This was a dope conversation. Let me make sure we're still recording. Oh yeah, an hour and thirty six minutes in. Yeah, we're good. Hey, it has been incredibly dope talking with you, man. I literally hope tomorrow um, you get everything you want. A million dollars, a blow job in the morning. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Your favorite band that's been broke up for 10 years gets back together. Oh, yeah. That would be that would be pretty epic. Well, for yeah. me, it'd be Mudvayne. <laughs> Mudvayne. <laughs> yeah, I know Mudvayne just came back together and did those three, three um, festival tours. You know what? Are, are you familiar with Mudvayne at all, the heavy metal band? No, no, I'm not. I'm not like really big into heavy metal. I like the the biggest heavy metal stuff. Subscribe. Let me just. Okay, I subscribed. Thank you, sir. The biggest heavy metal. Let's see, genres. It would be like. I don't think I don't know. Well, look, I'm a rapper. I, I, in, Stone I, Sour, so, stuff like that. Or well, Stone Sour, the lead singer of Stone Sour is also the lead singer of Slipknot. Ah. Yeah, it is. I was gonna say Slipknot too. Seether's pretty good. Seether's good. I love Broken. Um, yes. Oh my gosh. Or, and broken. what's that? Um, uh, fake it to make it track. I don't remember the, exactly the, the lyrics to that sh- the track, but as soon as it comes on every time, like I'm on that shit. Um, yeah. And Disturbed. Disturbed, another good band. Um, ooh. Ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Mudvayne for me, um, Mudvayne is the music for people that will no longer be ignored. You okay. know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. Like pretty much every other, like Marilyn Manson, his music is for people that are socially awkward, not really cared about much. You know what I'm saying? Who cares about them guys? Right. Mudvayne, yeah. <laughs> Mudvayne is for those fans, and they finally realize, you know, fuck this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. Mudvayne is the music you listen to before and after you murder everybody you love or oh, you shit. hate. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. uh, they have a song called Death Blooms, and in it, yeah. they use this guitar riff for only four bars. But every time it comes on, that's how it starts. Anyways, they only play this one riff one time, but every time I picture myself in fucking, you know, fucking tiger fucking uh, or my human adversary's flesh for clothing and their blood is war paint and I got two yeah. battle axes running at a thousand opponents. You know what I'm saying? Like that's uh, yeah. It's yeah. the music I listen to when it's time to ride on a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's time to go to war. It's time to go to war. Exactly. It is the mud. It's that. That's the metal I like. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But anyways, I also listen to 1930s swing music. You know what I'm saying? Like fucking yeah. Benny Goodman and Sing Sing Sing. Okay. You know Man, my my music is the same way. When I'm in my car and I put my uh, my music on, everybody tells me that. My music has got ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could probably be told the same thing. Hold on, let me pull on my YouTube right quick. All right. So this is my jammy jams. This is um 
like this one, literally this is my my playlist is called Jamie Jams. This is pretty diverse. <laughs> <laughs> Niall Horan on the loose, Uptown Funk, hey. Uh, hey. Tones and I, Dance Monkey, The Weekend, Dance Can't Mon- Feel My Face, uh, Gorillas, yeah. Clint Eastwood, Typo Gorillas Negative, again. Black Number One, AWOL Nation, Sale. Uh, yes, Aaron yes. Smith dancing, handsome <laughs> dancer, coincidence, Al Green, love and happiness, Everlast, what is what it's like, uh, Pavlar Stellars, booty swing, uh, Pharrell, happy, magic, rude, uh, LMFAO, sexy and I know it, Coldplay, adventure of a lifetime, Sean Kingston, beautiful girls, Nelly Furtado, promiscuous, uh, Chet Faker, gold, uh, Narles Barkley, crazy. Psy Gangnam style. You know what I'm saying? Like Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I'm pretty sure most of those you would listen to too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy. Uh like mine, let's go with So I have Takashi, Adrenaline. Uh, six nine? Yeah. Huh? Six nine? Six nine adrenaline. Ugh. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> I even have Jennifer Lopez, Ain't It Funny. Oh, okay. Jamie Jam. Mar- right. Marvin Gaye, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Woo! Bill Withers, Ain't No Sunshine. Oh, dog, Ain't No Sunshine when she's, when she's gone. gone. Oh, yeah. dog, we can get Dog, I'll, I'll kiss that dude. I'm straight. Right? I mean, God. Dude, the only man could rock a motherfucking turtleneck and get away with it. <laughs> exactly, man. <laughs> <laughs> I got some Brooks and Dunn, Ain't Nothing About You. Okay. Luke Bryan. Dude, Luke Bryan's pretty awesome. Is that country? All My Friends Say. Darius Rucker. I'm in love with his voice. Darius Rucker, that sounds familiar as shit. What's the, he, what genre is that? Uh, country. He's a black country guy. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that's Beautiful awesome. voice. I love, like, almost every one of his songs is just gorgeous. Well, uh, I have to piss like a Russian racehorse with a glue truck behind him. It, this has been <laughs> an awesome experience. I'm definitely putting this on the podcast. You enjoy your fucking night. Have a good fucking year. An entire yeah, good you year. 